Sean, I have a little bit of a problem I'd like you to solve. I know that some people are saying that they might not drink all the beer they make and that's the reason why they, they're a little concerned because there's a lot of beer that comes with 10 liters at a time. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're the two cowboys. We want a lot more beer. So what we don't want to do is tie up our brew kegs in dispensing while they can actually be doing some brewing. So yep. the option for that would be to transfer the beer somewhere. Yep. We've got some choices. I know that we can do it in bottles, we can do it in our growlers, but you've got a better solution, don't you? Well, we can just take it directly into a keg and it's uh, it's ready to drink in the kegerator. And the keg you're referring to is referred to as a Cornelius keg. I think where we come from, it's called a Pepsi keg. Yep. Yeah. So you're gonna show us how this all happens and how easy it is it's to do? It's easy, I'll show you. So things that you need, you need gas, because mm -hmm. we're gonna push using gas into our Cornelius keg. We need, uh, a bleed valve. So basically, as we're filling this keg, we want to bleed a little bit of gas, and this is the thing that controls the flow. We want the flow to be nice and slow. Um, just on that, we want the flow to be about uh, two liters a minute. So five minutes is a nice time to fill this keg, as I said, controlled by this little bleed valve here. We have a beer transfer line. So this is black and black. So what that means is that's transferring from the bottom of this keg and up into the bottom of this keg and filling up. Uh, and the last thing that we actually need is we need our little black connector from our picnic tap. One of the big questions that's gonna come up immediately in the back of my mind is how do I stop during this whole transfer process for things to really foam up in there? If you can have your beer at one or two degrees in the kegerator, and when you bring it out of the kegerator or the fridge, get transferring immediately. So what we're gonna to do to prep this vessel, we've cleaned it and sanitized it. That's an important step. Yeah, which everybody knows how to do by now. Yep. So the second thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take uh, CO2 from the cylinder, and this is why I've taken this off the beer tap. We're gonna put it on the beer tap connection and put the CO2 into the bottom of the cylinder. What that does is pushes any air and oxygen to the top. We will bleed that air and oxygen and then we will fill this keg to the same pressure so everything's in balance. It sounds like a bit of a complicated step. Why do I do that? Why don't I want any air or, or oxygen in my keg? So oxygen is the thing that makes beer go stale. So what we like to promote at every step is the ability to just keep oxygen away from the beer. It's a small extra step, but it's worthwhile. Good, and do I just take off the, the gas yep. connector? Yep. Okay, I'll hold and you, you pull. There you go. There you go. So now we'll reconnect. So what we do is we push in and we just pull again to make sure that it... And they really fit. I mean, I just want to show here. It effectively looks like it's exactly the same except for the colors. The heads are different on the inside. The one's a little slimmer and the other one's a little fatter than the other one. Yep. But uh, now we've got a beer tap yep. with gas in it. And the reason is that we're using the beer line which runs to the bottom to push the gas in from the bottom and bring it up. And then we'll bleed the air out of the top. So the second part of it is to put this on in preparation. I'm going to wind that up nice and tight. You let me know when you need some gas. Yep. Let's go. Listen to that. All right. So we've got we've got gas going in. Oh, you can hear the yep. pressure is just about there. Now what I can do is just bleed a little bit out. So you're going to bleed it at that valve, not at the top valve. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could do either, but we've yeah. got this on. Um, and that's now bled. Okay, good, oxygen gone. So now I'll just take that off. Give back our beer tap, here's our gas tap. I'll put that on for you. Rem you remember, just give it a little pull mm -hmm. and it's on, that's good. The beer line. So the beer line is on and that's obviously not doing anything at the moment. Okay, we sure this is pressurized? Yeah, we, we know that's pressurized. You wanna, you wanna double check for well, me? Well, look, I'll just, you listen. Ah. Pressurized. Got it. This now doesn't go onto my, my, my transfer cake, it goes on my uh, beer cake. Correct. Good. Okay, let's get that going. Okay, that's in. Right. And I need to make sure the pressure is the same here. So yep. I'm gonna open my, my gas. So we're running this at one or two degree beer temperature. Mm -hmm. About 1.1, 1.2 bar is a nice kind of pressure flow. Right. And we've got everything in balance now, okay? So we'll put this on and we'll start to see. So theoretically nothing should happen because it should be in equilibrium. It is, and you can see essentially there's, there's a, I, did a little you, bit of flow. Do you remember I took some out before? I remember. So that's okay. So we've just got a really slow flow at the moment. How would I know it's actually filling up? 
when you've got really chilled beer, one degree temperature beer, you will actually start to see a, a condensation line uh, coming up the side. Really important point, Hendrik, that's a 9.5 litre keg. There's 500 mil of difference. You know what you do with that 500 mil? Oh buddy, I came prepared. Are you ready? <laughs> that's right. So we basically, we drink a yeah. couple of beers and that way we know that we can empty that keg into here. How do I know everything's been transferred over? Do I have to put it on a scale? No, no, no. So basically, we will be taking the beer from the bottom of this keg and at, at a point in time, we will just see that, that um, beer line go, start to go clear, basically. Here. If we didn't have our two beers, we'd actually start to see liquid coming up this line. There you go. And then you'd know it's time to stop. Let's, Great. Let's get a go. Here's, here's where the magic happens. We just allow a little bit of pressure to come out, which is the gas escaping. And you'll hear a noise in a moment. You can hear that noise. Mm -hmm. That means that gas is escaping and beer is going in. Um, you, you are quite welcome to just pick it up from time to time and get a feel for it, but you want to run it about two litres per minute, which is about a five minute fill. Good. You solved the big problem for us. Now we can get back to brewing with this one while yep. we're drinking from this one. That's exactly right. And you know what's really awesome? Because it's so nice and small, I can take a little soda stream bottle with us and what you call your picnic beer tap, <laughs> and uh, we can go and serve our friends. We That's can take it. it on the party. That's it.